Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football Alabama Bold Predictions heading into 2024. One of the more fascinating teams to talk about bold predictions with because there are so many different names and so many different ways that this Alabama program can look in 2024. Fired up to get into this one before we do one. Would love to hear from the Alabama fans, whether you agree, whether you disagree with my bold predictions, would love to hear your feedback in the comment section. But I think more importantly, you know, we all get our opportunity to call our shot heading into 2024. I would love to hear some of your bold predictions in the comment section as well. And if y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. The amount of support the Alabama fans have shown as we've broken down these commitments on the recruiting trail kind of talked about this Bama program heading into 2024. I can't thank you guys enough. Appreciate y'all rocking with it. And without further ado, let's get into my first bold prediction, and that is Jalen Milrow Heisman season. And what I mean by Heisman season is that we're going to be talking about Jalen Milrow come November being a Heisman Trophy candidate. Now, I think uh, a lot of people have questions about how Jalen Milrow fits into what Kalen DeBoer wants to do on offense. And the way I would answer that is, I don't think Kalen DeBoer has this specific offense in mind that he's going to run at Alabama. He has certain concepts that he certainly will go to during his time in Tuscaloosa that have proven to be successful during his coaching career. That being said, you look at the background of Kalen DeBoer and what makes him such a good offensive minded coach is that he knows how to scheme his offense and kind of structure his offense around the particular players that are operating in it. And I thought the biggest problem with this Alabama offense at times in 2023 is they just didn't play to Jalen Milrow's skill sets. And when you did see the Alabama offense, look at Jalen Milrow and really lean into what he could do. I think about the LSU game, you saw a Heisman Trophy caliber quarterback. There is <clears throat> no question in anybody's mind that Jalen Milrow has the capability of being one of the more dominant quarterbacks in all of college football. Now you have Kalen DeBoer, who is going to structure this offense around what Jalen Milrow does best. And you dive into Jalen Milrow, there are certain things that really make him an elite caliber quarterback. One, obviously what he can do as an athlete. I don't think there's a more dynamic athlete at the quarterback position in all of college football than what Jalen Milrow can do. So you got to make sure you're leaning into his athleticism, making him that matchup nightmare for opposing defenses. But I think secondly, there are a couple other things. I mean, he completed 52% of his passes, 20 plus yards down the field. I don't know if there's a quarterback that throws a better deep ball and more consistently than Jalen Milrow. So there are certain things that make Jalen Milrow, or certain uh, traits, I should say, that Jalen Milrow has that make him elite. I think the question is, can you lean into that? And I think, secondly, there are some gaps in his game that I think he can kind of sure up. Right? You look at the intermediate throws for Jalen Milrow, he only completed 52% of them. I mean, that was the same completion percentage as Jalen Milrow pushing it down to the deeper third. If you can kind of fill in those gaps – going into 2024, make him a little bit more of a well-rounded quarterback. There's two things that really have me believing in Jalen Milrow is one, Kalen DeBoer leaning into what Jalen Milrow does best and structuring the offense around Jalen Milrow. Again, when we saw Alabama do that in 2023, this was a very good quarterback we saw. But I think secondly, there's a lot of reason to believe that Jalen Milrow just gets better at the quarterback position going into 2024, we all know what Kalen DeBoer does in terms of developing quarterbacks. We've seen it obviously with Michael Penix, a, a lot of tailwinds kind of pushing Jalen Milrow to take that step in 2024. And if he does take that step, you make no mistake about it. You are looking at one of the better quarterbacks, not only in the SEC, but in the country. Number two, bold prediction, a true freshman on both, a true freshman, all American that is, on both sides of the football. Now let's start on offense. I think you have two really obvious candidates. You have Ryan Williams and Caleb Oden. I think both of these guys are going to play a lot for Alabama in 2024. And it's not something we're used to saying all that much with this Alabama wide receiver room. Cause most years you have really talented true freshmen coming in, but there's just not that much opportunity for true freshmen to come in and hit the ground running. You look at this 2024 season, it, there's not necessarily a 
a, a guy in this Alabama wide receiver. I think it's up for grabs. I think there are a lot of guys that could be that wide receiver one, but I don't think there is that bona fide wide receiver one that we know of heading into fall camp. So that gives Ryan Williams, Caleb Oden, that opportunity to emerge as difference makers as true freshmen, two guys that might be the two most talented pass catchers in this wide receiver room for Alabama, kind of in different ways. Ryan Williams, just electric movements, movement skills. I mean, you look back at the last couple of high school classes, it is really hard to find a wide receiver that moves as, as twitchy, is as smooth as Ryan Williams. And then you look at Caleb Oden and say, just matchup nightmare. I don't know how many defensive backs just have the pure physical traits to deal with the size and frame. And then on top of that, the athleticism that Caleb Bowden have, I think both of these wide receivers have elite characteristics that will allow them to play early as true freshmen in this Alabama wide receiver room. I would think that one of those two can kind of emerge as a true freshman all American on the offensive side of the football. Then you go to the defensive side and I think I'm going to lean into the secondary that, you know, I think on paper, a lot of people have question marks about because it's relatively young and you use the transfer portal pretty heavily to fill in the secondary. Two guys I want to shout out. One, Zabian Brown coming over from modern day, five-star cornerback. We talked about him a lot. We even talked about him back when he committed to Alabama. The big kind of calling card for Zabian Brown was this kid is college football ready coming from the high school ranks. He's really, really polished, has those ideal physical traits that you're looking for. Xavier Brown's going to play a lot for this Alabama team. I think he certainly could be one of those true freshman All-American. The other one I want to talk about is Red Morgan, a guy that is getting so much buzz during this offseason as a freshman. Another guy that, again, there's opportunities for true freshmen to get into the rotation in the secondary, and I think they have the talent to do so. And so I think Xavier Brown, Red Morgan, your true freshman All-American candidates on the defensive side of the football, but – I think for both sides, you're looking at a couple of true freshmen that not only have the opportunity, but I think certainly the capability from a physical standpoint to be those kind of guys. Number three, going back to the offensive side of the football, and for the Alabama fans that y'all been rocking with the fellas for the last couple of weeks and months, and really the last year, Justice Hands is that guy. And I have loved him since his high school ranks at, at Buford High School. You look at Justice Hands as a true freshman – was kind of surprised he didn't play more as a true freshman, played some really quality football. I mean, they trusted him in some big moments in the college football playoffs against Michigan. This kid checks all the boxes. I mean, thick lower half, can deal with contact exceptionally well. When he gets into space, he's one of the more dynamic running backs. And I think going into year two, he can hold up and pass, bro. He obviously can run the football in a lot of different ways. I, I think Kalen DeBoer – is going to lean into this rushing attack, whether it's Jalen Miller, whether it's Justice Hands, And I'm not counting out guys like Jam Miller or Richard Young. I think a, a lot of running backs are going to get touches. That being said, I think it's going to be a run-heavy offense, which a lot of people don't really understand because Kalen DeBoer, obviously known for airing it out at Washington. Again, Kalen DeBoer is going to structure this offense to the strengths. And I think one of the strengths for this Alabama offense is what this offensive line can do specifically in the run blocking department. I think you got the two best run blockers in the inside of this offensive line in the country with Tyler Booker and Jaden Roberts. Caden Proctor obviously can move people off in that left tackle spot. This is an offensive line that is constructed to move bodies off the line of scrimmage. Kalen DeBoer has never had a physically imposing offensive line like this, so we've never seen a Kalen DeBoer offense really be super run heavy. I think you could see Kalen DeBoer lean into the rushing attack a little bit more because of how this team is constructed. And we talked about it. Kalen DeBoer is going to lean in and script this offense based on what this Alabama offense has from a personnel standpoint. They're going to run the football. I think Justice Haynes emerges as that running back one in this Alabama offense. I have him going for over 1,000 yards. Going to number four, and I think one of the more fascinating conversations that you can have about this Alabama team Who's going to be the wide receiver one? Who's going to emerge as that guy in this Alabama offense as a pass catcher? We talked about Ryan Williams. We talked about Caleb Bowman, two guys that I think could lead Alabama in receiving yards as true freshmen. I'm very interested in Kendrick Law. Now, I think a lot of this just had to do with what I heard Kalen DeBoer say at SEC Media Days where 
Kendrick Lodge running 23 and a half miles per hour, benching 405 pounds. You are talking about a premier athlete in Kendrick Law. Going back to what we talked about with Kalen DeBoer, he knows how to use his personnel. Kendrick Law might not be the polished wide receiver, one that we've seen in the past for Alabama. That is, but what he is, I should say, is one of the, if not the best athlete on the football field even going back from the high school ranks where he wasn't necessarily a five-star because he didn't really know what position he was going to play, but nobody doubted that he was one of the best athletes coming out of high school. Kendrick Glock can be a difference maker with the football in his hands. I think there's a way that Kendrick Glock, one, just gets developed as a wide receiver because Kalen DeBoer knows how to do that. But I think number two, Kendrick Glock is not that difficult. They just get the football in his hands and let him do what he does best, be a playmaker. Kalen DeBoer is going to know how to do that. You talk about giving Jalen Milrow some easy access throws and not just asking to push the ball down the field every single rep. Kendrick Law can be that guy. And so I'm looking for Kalen DeBoer to get creative in terms of how they use Kendrick Law in this offense. Again, you have probably six, seven guys that could be the wide receiver one in this Alabama offense. I guess I'm going to take this time to – project Kendrick Law to be that guy in this Alabama offense. I would love to hear from the Alabama fans from that take because I would love to hear how you guys are feeling and what wide receiver one you would like to see Alabama have in 2024. Going to my last bold prediction, I want to go to the defensive line. I think another really fascinating storyline, I don't think you're going to have the elite edge rushers that you had last year. Dallas Turner, Chris Braswell, guys that are really, really difficult to replace. I think they have really good edge rushes. You have a ton of young talent, whether it's from the transfer portal, whether it's just high school guys getting a little bit older, the talent is there in the edge rusher department. That being said, I think Alabama can be dominant on the inside of the defensive line. So my bold prediction is two defensive linemen specifically on the inside are all SEC members, whether that's Jaheim Otis, whether that's Tim Keenan, whether that's Damon Payne or Tim Smith. I think two of those guys emerge as game wreckers and you look at the strong points of this Alabama defense I think partially it can be on the inside of the defensive line for Alabama in the 2024 year I'm not discounting the edge rusher position I think they have some guys that are going to get after the passer on the perimeter I look at the strength of this Alabama defensive line everybody wants to talk about replacing those edge rushers yes that is a question mark I look at the inside and say This Alabama defense has the capability to take over games from the interior. And I think if this Alabama team reaches their potential in the 2024 year, it's going to be because of guys on the inside of the defensive line that are really starting to take over. Those are my five bold predictions. Would love to hear from you guys in the comments section. Appreciate y'all rocking with it. Again, if you guys do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys. We'll talk to y'all later. Peace.